Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Shay Ali here with you on Inspired Online. And this afternoon, I've got the immense pleasure of welcoming you to Dave Thompson. Now, Dave is in the UK, so we haven't flown out somewhere exotic today, unless you think the UK is exotic. <laughs> but his message is just incredible. He's on a personal mission to change the way that influence is taught right now. And having said that, He's one of the masters of influence himself. He's trained with Robert Cialdini, who a lot of you may have heard of, who is probably the godfather of influence. He doesn't train that many people, but when he meets someone a little bit special, then he devotes his time. And that's exactly what happened when Dave met him. And so Dave's not only learned all those techniques, but goes around the world speaking, lecturing, teaching on those techniques himself. Um, he also spoke at the penultimate um, London inspired stage just before we were forced to end all our uh, live events for now. Um, but we're delighted to get him on the online format and hopefully share him with Beyond London. So <laughs> welcome, welcome. Lovely to see you again. Um, and I'll start with our opening question, which is, if you had to share your wisdom in a nutshell, what would you say? Thank you very much. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Great to see you again. Thank you. Sorry, Shay, you just froze there. Sorry, your, your, your screen uh, just froze. Yes, I was going to say, if you had to share your wisdom with the world in a nutshell, what would you say? Um, Probably the biggest thing to, that helps you achieve anything is a positive mental attitude. So that's the starting point of all achievement. That's my outlook on life in terms of, if we look at today, COVID-19, in terms of what's happening, you know, this will end. So, but we, we need to carry on in our life. And so for me, the, the mm. but in order to be successful, I just think the most important thing is to have a positive mental attitude. And from my perspective, that's the right mental attitude in any given set of circumstances incorporating the plus traits of life so you you know and the plus traits of life are things like hope that mm -hmm. things will get better faith in the future and then have an integrity your own internal integrity which is a set of standards you don't drop below irrespective of circumstance mm -hmm. so pma is the biggest thing and in life what happens is life goes up when things are good and then it goes down when things are bad and obviously we get it going like that. But to me, it's not about life going up or down. It's about recognizing where your mental state is, what your mental attitude is at that time. And um, if, if I asked you, Shay, I said to you, what's the opposite of a positive mental attitude? What would you say? Okay, negative mental attitude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and, I, and I, I'd, I'd argue with you and I'd say it's not that. A negative mental attitude, that's the wrong mental attitude in any given set of circumstances, incorporating the negative traits of life. Mm. That's NMA equals can't do, why try? That's not the opposite of a positive mental attitude because in reality, it's really hard to be negative because if you're being negative about something, how do you feel, good or bad? Usually bad. Yeah, you feel bad, so it's hard to be negative, right? Mm. But what you do do is you, you, you hang around with, and where you are the opposite of a positive mental attitude with a negative mental attitude's best friend which is known as inertia right we tend mm. to go inert mm. right which is uh, an inertia was best friends in in the old olden times we'd, we'd like it was sort of stay here do nothing so we sit around and we wait and we don't do anything and whenever we go inert that's when we're really the opposite of a positive mental attitude. When we're just, we're waiting for something to happen for us or to us and then deciding. When actually what we could do is we could say, well, do you know what? I can do, I will try, I'm gonna get on. And so for me, positive mental attitude, that's, that, that's what it takes to be successful. You know, you've mm. got to have that positive mental attitude. Now, sometimes it's hard to do on your own. Yeah. You, oh God. I, you know, I can't do it. I'm, I'm having a real tough time. You know, my business really is having a tough time. These yeah. things have happened, but they've happened to everybody. They've happened in the past and they'll continue happening. Mm. And this thing is your life. Yes. It's your life. Yes. So you've got to decide what you're going to make from it. How can you turn this around? And so for me, it's about positive people, hanging around with great people, getting inspired. <laughs> And then, Absolutely. and then learning from adversity and defeat because this too shall pass. You know, yeah. it will pass, it will move on. 
Absolutely. Well, you know, for so people like you and I, I think that can be quite easy and it, it obviously makes a lot of logical sense to do that. Um, I'm going to make this question more difficult for you, maybe. What if you are someone that's actually, and right now we may have quite a few of these people that's suffering from something like PTSD or, you know, you have been playing this loop for so long yeah. that it's impossible to get out or you feel that it's impossible to get out of yeah. it. Uh, the first step? I, I, I think that first thing is that there was a there was a guy that knocked around the same time that Jesus Christ knocked around, and his name was Seneca. Okay. Seneca, and he was a, he was a philosopher, um, mm. and a philosopher is is, the, is that's the love of wisdom, and yes. Seneca's saying was a consciousness of wrongdoing is the first step towards salvation. A consciousness of wrongdoing is the first step towards salvation. So in other words, you have to catch yourself doing it wrong before you can correct it. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you haven't got the right mental attitude in any given set of circumstances incorporating the plus traits of life, you've not got that can-do, will-try attitude, then, and you are inert, you don't know what to do, what can you do? And for me, the most important thing is you've got to get a self-starter. You've got to have a self-starter. And that's a person. Right, so find a friend, so reach out to me and I'll give you some things, you know, some contrast, some context in terms of helping you overcome adversity and defeat. So, you know, mm. we, we're here, reach out to me and I'll give you some insp inspiration. It could be a piece of music. It could be um, an, an interesting story that you take from a book. But often, you know, if we think our problems are terrible problems. But my friend once said to me once, a, a guy called Paul Thurland, a dear, dear friend I've known since he was a kid, who's super wise, he said, if you threw all of your problems up in the air, mm. I bet you wouldn't mind catching your own. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to catch some kid in Sudan's problems. You think, well, actually, mine are good. My bit of whatever it is, PTSD or whatever it is. So people have overcome that in the past. So you might need to go meet somebody that's had that same problem and overcome it. You know, if somebody's died and you're grieving, then there's nothing you can do. You are going to grieve. Right, but that's, that's that's not negativity. That's not not positivity. It's just saying this is just this 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 is a hurt and it will heal. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what we do is we make our own problems, you know, because we live inside of our own head and it's the worst mm -hmm. place to be. Mm -hmm. So, to me, the most important thing is having the right mental attitude, having that can do will try attitude. That will open up doors beyond your wildest dreams and imaginations. But if you don't knock they never open and if you don't ask you won't get and if you get stuck and you don't ask for help nobody will help you very very true uh, well quite a few questions on the back of that i i do have a specific example in my head and the, i guess the first i can't say too much about it because it was a, a client who was in let's just say a very very bad state yep. um but um you know i guess what if your self-starter lets you down because you know in that person's case um the people around him i know you know this um person wasn't necessarily improving as it were and it was yep. causing some frustrations for the family and the people around so what happens so, when that goes so, so I, mean, I mean i can give you a personal example like by the time i was 10 years old i'd lived in nine different houses wow. right right nine different houses like so we we moved i mean one of those houses was a children's home right wow. one of them was a children's home because my dad used to come home he was an alcoholic he'd beat me up he'd beat my mum up and mm. whatever another one was a battered wife's home because we never had anywhere to live we'd had the electric cut off we never had the gas cut off because we never had any gas wow. but, but do you know what when when you grow up and you've not got a lot and and you can contrast that to today you know i've got a lot today i'm you know i live an incredibly fortunate life you start to learn that life's what you make it. Life's what you make it. And then you, you, have to, you have to go look and think, well, okay, who else could help me? We didn't come on our own. We always come in pairs. You always come with a mum or a dad or whatever. So you find somebody else that can help you. And mm. there's always somebody there to help you, but you've got to ask. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, you've got to buy a ticket if you want to win the raffle. And so you have to go and ask. But if you knock on the door and say, go on, then give me some help. And there's nobody, no problem is so big that you can't half it with somebody else, share it with somebody else. Yeah. And they'll say to you, okay, let's look at this from a different perspective. Let's make you think differently and then act differently. And then you get different things. 
Mm. You know, and I've studied with, you know, some of the best people that have walked the planet, a guy called Milton Erickson, who was the yeah. world's greatest hypnotherapist. He could use a thing called conversational hyp hypnotherapy to, you know, just change the way that people framed the world. They looked at it and to change their perspective. And mm. there's nothing that you can't do that you don't put your mind to, you know, if, if you really think about it and you think about like problems, you think this is a terrible problem. It's a really hard problem to solve. Mm. Okay. Imagine you had to go and stick a man on the moon or a woman on the moon. And they said, come on, David and Shay, you got, you got six weeks. You'd never be able to do that or invent electricity. You couldn't do that. But you think, well, I need to sort out these problems inside my head or inside this other person's head. Mm. That's doable. That is eminently doable. We might need to get um, some help. We might need to read some books. We might need to ask some people, but we can always do it. So mm. positive mental attitude, that's the starting point of all achievement. And it's, it's the thing that makes the difference. And if you mm. haven't got the right attitude, you'll be sat on your ass and you won't do anything, being inert, and then you'll be miserable and life won't be great. But if you can get the right mental attitude or get the right people around you, then that makes a difference. There was a guy called Robert Greene, Robert okay. Greene. And he wrote yeah. a book called The 48 Laws of Power. 48 mm. Laws of Power. And there's a law 10, and it's called the law of contagion, right? And what he says is attitudes are as contagious as diseases. Attitudes are just wow. as contagious. And so you've got, if you're, and he's, what he says is avoid the unhappy and unlucky. They're as contagious as diseases. Now, it doesn't mean amazing advice. <laughs> you've got to avoid if people are genuinely sucking the life out of you then you've got to try and break that cycle mm. so you think, well, okay let's put some good stuff in and water it down like you would with diluting orange you d dilute it down you know if you're in a bad relationship how can you put make it a little bit better a little bit better a little bit better a little bit better and before you know it's to infinity and beyond and your life's got better mm. it just does but without the right mental attitude you'll never be successful ever you can't no Absolutely not. I, I completely agree. And probably the most successful people have had, you know, that positive mental attitude. Um, so let's go to the positive then. So let's go to, you know, someone who's already doing pretty well. Uh, what do you think makes the difference between those people that are, you know, really comfortable in life, but they've kind of hit a ceiling? and the people that like have sort of mega fortune or mega abundance in whatever way that is what can help you make that shift so, so for me the most important thing if if you, if you want to be successful there's four key elements to really be successful mm -hmm. four things so the first thing and this comes from the science of success philosophy it's mm -hmm. napoleon hill's work what he did with william clement stone and I'm certified to teach that stuff, but whatever. But it, it starts off with you got to have the right mental attitude. That's first. Yeah. Yeah. Then the next thing is you got to have a goal. What, what do you want? You know, if you don't want the biggest spot in the yacht in the harbour in Monte Carlo or the biggest yacht in Marbella in the harbour, then you're not going to do anything. So you've got to set a goal. A mm. goal. What do I want? Right. And then mm. the other thing is nobody does anything on their own. Nobody. You've mm. got to have somebody that you're going to work with because mm. at the end of the day, if it's you, just just you. You ain't going to do it. You need somebody else to work with, whether it's a coach, whether it's a business partner. But it's like, if we're doing something, it's cool. But if you're doing it on your jack, it's boring as shit. You've got to have somebody to work with. You've got to yeah. have that, mastermind, that, that person to mastermind with. You've got to go the extra mile. And so you go, here's my goal. Here's my mental attitude. Here's somebody I'm doing it with. And then I'm going to go the extra mile. And that's just doing more. And then anybody else will do working harder, learning harder, do more. So all of a sudden it's like your thinking is really good. You're working much harder. You're working with your mate. You've got this big goal. Next thing you know, bang, you start smashing it. Mm. And, and I know that from experience, you know, like personal experience, bitter and also sweet. You know, bitter at the start. Oh, my God, this is bad blaming the world. And then actually thinking, well, do you know what? From when I was in the children's home, my man was kicking me at him. We never had any money. I was thinking, actually, I'm sitting here now. I've got loads of money in the bank. Okay, I've lost a few staff. A few things have gone wrong. But you can turn this around. Let's set a goal. Let's get somebody else in to work with you. Mm. Let's make sure that we learn a little bit more from this mistake. What's great about it? Let's start learning and moving. And then all of a sudden, it's like, this is my life and I like it. Why? Yeah. Because I'm doing something. I'm learning something, I'm getting inspired, I'm inspiring other people. Loads of people will play your game with you, providing you've got the right energy. Loads. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's take that piece about, 
you know if you're on your own it's not it's not so great uh what would you say to someone out there who is maybe like a sole trader or you know there's some amazing creatives out there for example that might be writing you know music or, or whatever they're writing but they're very much doing it as a a solitary activity <laughs> so i mean it's the same thing you need to set a goal so if you're a sole trader there's loads of people that work for you commission only work out how much is your product that you're going to sell if you sell a package and you sell i'm going to sell my package it's going to be three grand how much would you give somebody else if they were going to sell your services mm. so well, i could afford to give them 20 percent. well that's 600 quid a week how many could you deal with in a month i could deal with 20 people all of a sudden you can pay somebody 144,000 a year right you can pay them that can you like give them it. a little bit of a guarantee to get them to start? And you say, look, this is the guarantee. Give them a little bit of a training program so they start to understand your services. And then give them something to do. There's loads of people that are sat around inert, on their ass, doing nothing, that would love an opportunity to be promoting your services out to their community and actually create something. That was how I started out. I started out commission only as a financial advisor, going to find my people and getting them to buy pensions and life insurance in 1990. So wow. loads of people can, you can do it. You're not, you're not on your own. So ask people, say, would you work for me? If I was to promote my services to you and you can go out and these are the kind of people that I want, this is what I work with. And I'll pay, pay you this much. If you don't ask, you definitely don't get, but if you do ask, you do get. And, and the other thing is like networking. How many people have already got a load of people like you, like that you would want and you say, if I could get you to help me, could, would you help me? This is the kind of people that I would like. How many people have you asked? If you ask one or have you asked a thousand? If you ask three a day every single day, right? That's a thousand people. You can't get nothing from that. It's not nothing will come. Something will change. So it's not like I'm an entrepreneur, I'm on my own. No, you're not. That's bullshit. You're never on your own. You've got a whole planet. There's eight billion people here. You've got loads of people around every single day. Start speaking to people. And don't speak to them once and when they say no. Talk to them over and over and over and over and over and over again. Talk to them every week for a year. They'll get sick of you. They'll just start throwing people at you just to remind you. So it's not it. called to Shay. Shay, can you help me? But you have to do something to get something. You don't do anything, <laughs> nothing happens. You're in out. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that concept of asking for help. Yep. Um, I'm someone that gets asked for help rather a lot. <laughs> and, you know, obviously I, I do want to help people. Yeah, that's quite yeah. genuine. And I'm kind of full with that sorts of requests so you know often i have to say or often i have to turn it down or you know i have these thoughts of okay so you're asking me to collaborate but you know this sounds so mean but what are you bringing to the table and things like that so you know sometimes, sometimes well, if somebody says you're going to do yes. something and there's a biscuit in it for you yeah you say, Look, do you on a minute there's nothing in it i mean i'll do loads of things for nothing and i'm sure you will as well yeah but you want to do that for people that genuinely want to help themselves but i mean you have to make your own judgment on the person that's in front of you the human being that's in front of you you know and are, are they really going and making a difference are they any good you know i mean i have an online program you know that i charge quite a lot of money for sometimes i'll give it away for free just to help people so mm. they understand how to be more persuasive how to be more influential mm. um so for you, Shay, what I would say is, have you got an online program where you could share some of your pearls of wisdom, some of the stuff that you've learned that you know makes people richer, happier, and more successful? And if you haven't, create one because it makes a difference. And it's a way of you helping lots of people if you want to without taking all of your time. Nice. I'll give you a really interesting story. So one of my great friends, a lady called Catherine, um, she, she might might not watch, watch this. Um, she's one of the directors at Coots. Um, she got me to do the keynote at Coots. Amazing, amazing thing. I was giving her son, uh, Dan, some, some coaching recently because um, he wasn't earning what I thought he should be earning. This kid's got a master's degree. He's a mega brain. And um, I said to him, let's go through. And so I took him through, gave him some coaching for a few weeks. He just got a job and doubled his salary in the last week wow nice <laughs> that's lovely so you like that you know i like that and i was i've got an online program and also i took him through and gave him some coaching so it's, so it's fantastic not all of it's about making money but no, everything needs not. to make sense everything needs to make sense yeah so if you want to help a lot of people if you want to help develop some kind of online program get in front of a camera and start talking to people okay well, you your top 10 favorite books what? 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, but I was wondering also about the flip side, you know, if you're someone who's getting started and you want to get that help, yeah. what's the best way to ask for it so that you can get that yes? So it, there's, a, there's a science to decision making and, 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 and this is what I teach and it's called influence. So the first thing when you speak to somebody, if you want to establish a relationship, you need to know that there's two shortcuts that we take. The first shortcut and, and what they do is these are linked to the core motive, the principle of how can I establish a relationship. Mm. And, and so the first principle of influence is the principle of reciprocity, mm. reciprocation. And so we want to repay our debts. If I do you a favor, you feel like you owe me a favor. If I invite you to one of my parties, like David Thompson, the Thompson household, big barbecue parties, you should come when oh, we have them. I can't like, wait. Um, <laughs> when? <laughs> next, time, next time I'm having a party and I invite you to a party, if you're having one afterwards, you feel obligated to invite me to your party. You think, hold on a minute. We have to More than welcome, Dave. Day. <laughs> there you go. So obligation says that we pay back our debts and the people that don't, we have names for them. So work out how you can do that person a favor and they'll feel obligated to help you back. Mm -hmm. The other thing is similarities, right? Like the principle of liking. If somebody delivers you a message and you like them, mm -hmm. you like them, you listen to them. If somebody mm -hmm. delivers you a message and you don't like them, 30% of the time, it doesn't matter if the message is good news or bad news, third of the time, you won't even listen to the message, a third. Mm -hmm. And there's three things that create liking, similarity, praise, cooperation, physical attractiveness. But what can you praise somebody for some, for, for some work that they've done? They've done a great piece of work. Tell them and say, Shay, I watched that interview you did with John Gray. It was amazing. Here's what you did that I thought was incredible. What that does for you inside is it trips a shortcut. You think, God, that was genuine praise. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. You've mm -hmm. cooperated with me and you've given me some praise. So we then start to form a relationship. So work out what you could do for somebody as a favor or what praise or similarities you've got in common with that person mm. to help you establish a relationship. Once you've established the relationship, it's then about overcoming uncertainty and motivating action. But whatever, we won't go into that. But that's the first thing. Establish a relationship. Do them a favor. Give them some praise. Wonderful. Um, we talked a lot in this interview about um, inertia and like when people don't have that positive mental attitude, um, you know, they get into that state of inertia. Um, are there any rituals or anything that you can suggest for that person who at the moment just isn't even in the mood to get out of bed in the morning? Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's loads. So one of my favorites is inside your head, you have this voice. Yeah. Mm. Right. And, I, and like you have a good voice and a bad voice. So I'm dyslexic. I'm rubbish at reading. I've never been any good at, pretty good at maths, but rubbish at reading. And so when Not it comes way, to reading things, like, I'm, my dyslexia, my brain, I'm, I've moved. <laughs> Remember the kid at school when they used to have to read out loud who stuttered and moved all the words around? That was me. I was terrible at it. So then, that, then I started listening to audio cassettes in my car. And now they have these things called audio books. Mm. Audio books. And I listen to an audio book almost every single day. Wow. And if you think about it, if you could sit down with, the cleverest people that have ever walked this planet, right? The, the, the brightest minds, the be most beautiful soul that have ever walked this planet, they'll have written a book or they'll have recorded an audio book. And I like to listen to their audio book, partly because I want to take the spirit of that person and get their head inside of my head to start programming my auto suggestion. So I'm going to have to respond from a Dave perspective. I can respond from a you know, a, a, come from a more spiritual place, more enlightened place. And I like to meditate. That's one of my, you know, whatever, one of my things. But so I like, if you get better voices inside your head, then the inner you will be programmed to be better. So listening to audio books, and there's some amazing books out there that will give you whatever genre you want, you know, the, 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 the stuff that you want. And I'll go to a site called audible.co.uk, which I'm sure everybody's heard of, audible.com. Just incredible, brilliant book, brilliant place. Um, I know you've uh, looked, well, you've listened to a lot of books, as you said, and you've also studied with some of the best teachers in the world. Um, what, is, what is the most important thing that you feel that you've learned from them? The most important thing, um, so recently I've studied with Dr. Robert Cialdini um, and, and Dr. Greg Nider, two of the leading social psychologists on this planet. Um, and they taught me about um, 
it, I mean, it, this is funny. I've, I've, I've gone into to do a, a course to learn about influence, and there's these two like pillars of you know of the world, two of the biggest people in the world in terms of influence, and they're having a conversation. And it was like, do you remember the Matrix? You ever seen the film The Matrix where yeah. Neo stops the bullets? Bob and Greg are talking, and that's the, Dr. Cialdini and Greg Knight. They're talking, and it was like watching the film The Matrix where they stop the bullets. They're just describing how things work. Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking. Oh God, please, God, please let me in. Please let me in. <laughs> and then they told me that, you know, they're every day they get two or three requests from people to be certified, to be trained, to work with, you know, Dr. Gialdini, Dr. Nida. Um, and they only take one or two people a year. Sometimes they take nobody. And um, luckily three years ago, I was selected, you know, to work with a great man and he's, he's a fortune. And one of the best things that I learned from those guys was, you know, to influence somebody, it's shorter, it's, it's simpler than you could ever possibly imagine. We overcomplicate things. It's only three things. It's about establishing relationships, which I told you there's two principles. It's about mm -hmm. overcoming uncertainty. It's about motivating action. That's all it is. There's no more complexity to it than that. You've got to have the right mental attitude and the goal. So that they were some of my, my favorite things that I learned. And... Um, and when you can do that, and it makes a difference. And then also, obviously, the positive mental attitude. My, my mentor, the first guy that I ever learned from, was a guy called William Clement Stone. And he was the guy that built the Aeon Corporation. Um, uh -huh. uh, um, and he built it from nothing, from $100, was brought up by a single parent. He had 17 kids, lived till he was 100. Um, and he taught me the essence of a positive mental attitude. And, you know, to this day, I've got a, a thing with PM Aeon. So I learned that from Clement Stone. And, you know, that... They're, they're just amazing things it's beautiful thank you so much for your time today it's been incredible to spend time with you as always i love to spend it time with you it's been amazing absolutely do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience um so, so for me guys and girls you know in the big wide world we're going to get adversities we, we will just get these things but if we all come together and we just help each other then life gets better so you know if i can help anybody and you want you know you want to reach out then just reach out i'm, I'm here you know just reach out and connect and you know if i can help in any way then you know we're all in this together so let's enjoy every moment absolutely and where can our beautiful audience reach out to you if they would like to so um, my, uh, I'm just creating a new business called Suada.com, S-U-A-D-A. And so if you, if you email me, David at Suada.com, you'll get me. Lovely. Well, David, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the outdoor barbecue whenever you... <laughs> <laughs> it's epic, I tell you. It's an epic. Oh, fair. It's a proper event. Um, and obviously take care of yourself and I hope you. to see you again in person very soon. I look forward to seeing you again in person. Thank you so much, Shay. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Take care and enjoy. <laughs>